Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this video, I want to give you 10 tips and tricks for using the Move tool in Photoshop. The Move tool is your default tool in Photoshop. It is the tool you're going to use to move things around, to align objects, to scale objects, to rotate objects, and even to skew objects or layers inside of Photoshop. And in this video, I'm going to give you 10 advanced tips and tricks for using the tool that you probably don't already know. Now, if you want to follow along with the same project file that I use, you can download that in the link in the description of this video. Otherwise, let's dive into Photoshop. Okay, so I'm going to open up this project file PSD, which you'll find in the assets. This is a learning file from Adobe. And the first tip I want to show you is quick access to the move tool. So if you're on any other tool inside of Photoshop, let's go ahead and go on the lasso tool and you want to get back onto the move tool, hit V on your keyboard. That'll immediately put you into the move tool. And then from there you can, you know, select your layer, move around, do whatever you want. And here's a bonus tip. If you're on a tool, let's say you're on the brush tool and you're brushing, and you want to temporarily activate the move tool just to move something real quick and then get back to brushing, you don't have to go here and go onto the move tool. You can simply hold down the command key on a Mac or the control key on a PC, and you'll be temporarily back onto the move tool. Okay, tip number two, if you want to make precise movements, rather than trying to do it with a mouse like this and moving like this, what you can do is with the move tool selected, use the arrow keys on your keyboard. So the up, right, down, and left keys will all move your layer by one pixel. And if you want to move it more, hold down shift and you'll move it by exactly 10 pixels. So your arrow keys are the way to make precise movements when the mouse is too cumbersome. Okay, tip number three, if you want to center a layer, there's a quick way to do that. So here you can see I have my parrots layer and I want to center this in my canvas. Unfortunately, my center tools here, as you can see, are all grayed out. Now I can go to the three dots and change the tool behavior from align to selection to align to canvas. And now you can see I have my centering options here. However, what I want to do is I want to do that, but I don't want to change my tool behavior each time because aligning to the selection is the default behavior that I want for the tool. So here's what we're going to do with our layer selected that we want to center. We're going to hit control or sorry, command a control a on a PC. And as soon as we do that, you can now see I have these other tools available to me. So again, the simplicity of that is command A, and then you'll see you have these options available for centering. Okay, tip number four, remove distractions. So as you're working, oops, let's deselect. So as you're working in Photoshop, you may have noticed these blue boxes. And also as I move my mouse around, you can see these kind of hovering blue boxes. Personally, I find these very distracting. So I'm going to turn off show transform controls. And to turn off these blue hover effects, I'm going to go to this gear and turn all of these off. This will not change the functionality of the software, meaning you can still do exactly the same things. You just won't have these distracting blue boxes around your layers that you're working on. Which brings me to tip number five, and that's transforming on the go. So if I want to rotate or scale this bird layer here that I have selected, I could go on to show transform controls and then go ahead, and make whatever change I want, and then commit it by clicking on this check mark. I'm going to go ahead and control Z. 
However, if I want to do this on the move and I don't want to have these show transform controls turned on, what I can do is from here, simply do Command T on my keyboard. That'll show my transform controls. I can then make whatever transforms I want. And rather than going up here with my mouse, I can just double click in here and that'll commit those transforms. If I don't want to commit the transforms, rather than going up here and clicking here, I can hit escape on my keyboard. So that's a quicker way to access those transform controls. All right, tip number six is this auto select. Now by default, Photoshop has this turned on and I believe has it turned on for groups, which is pretty much the worst default behavior that you can have. Here's the problem. If I want to select this flamingo and I click on it, it's going to make me select the group rather than the flamingo. So by default, you're going to want this on layer, not group. Now I can select that flamingo. I can select the single leaf, the banana leaf. This is just a better default behavior. However, even this default behavior has a big flaw. So let's say I select this vine in the background. So I'm selecting the vine. I now want to move the vine to the left side of my image. So I'm going to click and start dragging. And right away, you can see the problem. This rainbow layer, because it's set on screen and is black, covers on top of that vine. So there's no way for me to move this vine without selecting the layer on top of it. So we're going to turn off this auto select. And now if I move select my vine, no matter where I click, it's going to move the layer I have active, which is my preferred behavior. But you still want to have that functionality of being able to click a layer that you want to select without having to go into the layers palette. So here the trick is simply hold down command. And when I hold down command, you'll see that this behavior changes. If I let it go, that check mark turns off. So what we're doing with the command key is we're temporarily toggling the ability to click and select layers. As soon as I let go of command, now wherever I click, I'm not selecting a new layer. My selection stays on the layer I want to work on. Okay, and that brings us to tip number seven, which is what you do when you have numerous layers on top of each other. So in this case, I want to select the background, but no matter where I go and hold down command and click, I'm going to get the rainbow instead. Even if I click on this vine, I'm getting the rainbow. So what to do? Well, a good tip here is right mouse click and you'll get a list of the layers that are directly under your mouse. So if I right mouse click here, I can select my vines layer or I can select my background layer. Here I can select the parrots, the rainbow, or the background. So simple trick here, right mouse click, and this will also work on a Mac by holding down control and clicking, and then you can select the layer you want to work on. Okay, next tip is how to make a duplicate on the fly. So we all know Command J will make a copy of a layer. However, that's the long way to make a uh, layer copy. A much quicker way is simply hold down Option as you move a layer to its new location, and now you have two copies. And this also works within the layer palette. So let's say I don't want to move the location of it, but I want to have another copy. I can hold down Option, drag this layer, and now I have two copies. And this also works with nudging. So if I want to make a copy of this that's 10 pixels to the right, I can hold down Shift Option and then click my right arrow. And you can see that that's made a copy of that layer 10 pixels to the right. Okay, next, I want to show you the next tip here is turning on smart guides to help you align things on the fly. So here, if we go to view, show, smart guides, and as I start moving a layer around, you can see that I'm now getting these 
pink guides that help show me where an element is. So let's say I want this to the left, but I want it to align with the existing bird. Well, as I move this layer, you can see there, I now have this guide indicating that this is at exactly the same height as the other layer. Um, I could also maybe want it below this layer, but still lined up vertically. Well, here with those three guides, I now know that this layer is lined up with the others. And this also works in separating the distance between layers. So I'm going to have a copy here, here, and here. And I want this copy to be just as far away from this guy as this one is. Well, as I start to move this to the right, at a certain point, I'm going to get an indicator here saying, oh, well, right here somewhere, oh, right there, I now know that those three are the same distance. So the smart guides basically just work with you and show you where something aligns to the other elements in your image, making it easy to put things in their right place make precision movements on the fly. Okay, tip number 10, which is our last tip, and that has to do with guides and snapping to guides. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my guide. So let's go ahead and show guides, which is command semicolon. And you can see I have a, lot, a guide up here, and I want this to snap to guide. So I'm going to go to view, snap, and turn this on and also to view and make sure this is snapping to guides, which by default it does. So now as I take this layer, you can see as I get close to that guide, you, you can see that it snaps. And you also notice that my uh, cursor turns white. That means it is actively snapping. Now, what if I want to move this close to this, but maybe just one pixel down? Well, that's going to be really hard to do because once I get kind of close to this guide, it's going to snap. So here, when I'm five pixels away from it, it's snapping to it without me moving it five pixels. So a way to temporarily turn off your snapping without having to go up here and turn it off is simply hold down control on your keyboard as you're moving something. So here you can see I don't have it turned on, meaning the snapping is turning on. But if I hold down control, you can see I can now move it away just one or two pixels and it's not going to try to snap it. So here I'm a few pixels away. If I let go of control, you can see it's now it wants to snap again. So the tip there is turn on snapping, but if you if that snapping is getting in the way of you putting something where you want, just hold down control as you're moving it and your snapping will temporarily turn off. So there you have it. Those are 10 tips and tricks for using the move tool in Photoshop. And hopefully you learned something here that you can use in your own projects and to speed up your own workflows in Photoshop. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Photoshop, how to use it to create graphic design, enhance your images, or spoof up your photography, check out Nucle.com. I sell professional training for photographers, artists, and designers who are using Photoshop, as well as professional assets, presets, textures, overlays, and so forth. So check that out, nuclei.com. Otherwise, here's some other tutorials to check out, and I'll see you next time.